In part one, we looked at the uh, basic operating principles of a forward converter and looked at the uh, equivalent circuits valid in different operating intervals. In this video, we will look at um, in detail the various current voltage and flex waveforms um, that we see during the steady state operation of a forward converter. So these are the three equivalent circuits, the one during the on interval and the two uh, separate uh, off intervals, one when the core is being reset and the other when the core is completely uh, reset. All the waveforms that we're going to see in this video, they correspond to this condition where the number of uh, primary turns is equal to the number of reset turns, n primary to n reset is one is to one. And uh, for this condition, the maximum duty ratio that we can have in steady state is uh, 0.5. Uh, so we'll analyze cases where d is less than or equal to 0.5. And uh, it's important to note that we are talking about n primary to n reset and nothing uh, at all about the n secondary. So n secondary can have can be anything depending on whether we, we want step up or step down. Okay, so there is no restriction on n secondary being equal to the n primary. It's only between n primary to n reset is 1 is to 1. So with this condition, the first waveform that we will look at is the voltage of the primary winding V primary. So here is the on interval of duration D, duty ratio times uh, Ts, dTs, and the voltage of V primary during that period is V in, as uh, seen from the on interval equivalent circuit. And uh, during the off interval, so let's look at the off interval 1. So during this period, the um, winding that determines the voltage of all the windings is the, is the reset winding. Okay? Uh, just like in the on interval, the winding that determines the voltage of all the windings is V primary because that is where when once switch is on we can clearly see that we impress directly the V in across the primary winding and the other windings will have similar wave shape uh, scaled only by the turns ratio. Similarly during the off interval 1 it is the reset winding where we can clearly see say what the voltage is and that is equal to V in but with um, the polarity being if we define the voltage at the dotted end being as positive, um, negative, the undotted end is negative. If this is a V reset, then V reset is clearly uh, minus V in because the dotted end is connected to the negative end of the supply um, V in source. Okay. So therefore the um, voltage induced on the primary winding because of the one is to one turns ratio with the reset winding would also be V in. And since we are defining V primary with as positive at the dotted end, V primary similar to V, res, v reset will also be minus V in uh, as shown here. Okay. And uh, note that if the turns ratio is something other than 1 is to 1, then this magnitude has to be scaled by the turns ratio. But here it's 1 is to 1, therefore during the off interval 1 also V primary is uh, minus V in. Okay. This continues uh, till the core is reset. Uh, that is when the flex falls and reaches zero or the current through the reset diode reaches zero and the diode turns off and we enter the off interval two where clearly the uh, primary side switch S1, the reset diode as well as the secondary diode D1, they are all off and therefore each of the three windings they are actually floating and we write the voltage of the primary or the voltage of any of the windings to be exactly zero in that uh, off interval two. Uh, in practice, uh, it actually um, reaches zero and uh, actually there is um, due to the parasitic um, um, uh, L and C, there is a ringing involved and eventually it will die down to zero or it may even continue till the end of or the, till the beginning of the next cycle. Okay. But we are dealing with ideal components, therefore um, we, we can write the V primary to be exactly zero during the um, off interval two. Uh, in fact, this waveform is also the waveform for all the other windings uh, in each of the intervals. Um, so just scale by the turns ratio. So for our choice of n primary to n, res n reset being 1 is to 1, the waveform is exactly that of uh, V reset as well, as long as we define V re reset as um, positive at the dotted end. Similarly, V secondary also will have the same wave shape. Um, uh, same polarity because it is defined positive at the dotted end but it is scaled by this factor turns ratio n so it will be the v secondary is n times v n or the same wave shape or this waveform is also the waveform 
of B secondary over EN. Um, okay, then the next waveform that we will study is uh, what I've defined as the V rect. So this is the rectified waveform from the B secondary or the same as the voltage across the diode D2 which was uh, here. So this would be when the during the on interval clearly V rect is same as V secondary because this diode is shorted and um, okay. so that waveform is shown here. So during the on interval V rect is N times V and same as V secondary and uh, when the switch is turned off uh, we see that the uh, voltage is V secondary is negative, the diode D1 turns off and the diode D2 turns on to uh, provide a current path for the inductor current. So when diode D2 is conducting, clearly this voltage is zero. The V rect is zero. And uh, during the off interval two, also there is no change in the um, in the status of diode D2. It, it continues to conduct. Therefore, V rect V rect is also zero during the off interval two. And that is what is shown here. Okay, this n times V during the on interval. And for both the off intervals, V rect is zero. Um, and we will also use the fact that um, the VL average is zero, therefore V rectified average is also same as the output voltage VO. And we will use that to derive an expression for the output voltage. The next waveform that we see is that of the uh, inductor voltage VL. And uh, VL is uh, defined um, positive on the left end, so this is VL negative on the right end. Uh, so as defined that way, VL during the on interval clearly is uh, n times v n times VN, which is V secondary, minus the output voltage VO. So that's n VN minus VO during the on interval. And during both of these off intervals, um, the voltage is uh, 0 minus VO, so that's minus VO here. Okay. And uh, clearly the voltage uh, of an inductor has to be positive and negative, and its average should become 0. So VL average uh, is 0 in steady state. And as I mentioned, we can use the um, waveform of V-rect to determine the input-output uh, relationship. Um, so essentially, and that is by using the old second balance across the inductor, uh, or essentially writing KVL around this loop. So that would be V-rect uh, average equals VL average plus the output voltage VO. And in steady state, VL average should be equal to zero. Um, so, so it's, so so V rect average is equal to the output voltage VO and that is indicated here. And by looking at the waveform, if we take the average of this blue waveform, so it has a magnitude only during the on interval, so it's N V N times DTS plus zero, a whole thing divided by TS would give you the average and that comes out to be uh, N V N times T. Okay, so that is equal to the output voltage that is indicated here. So essentially we have uh, VO over V N equals uh, N times D. Now we know that a forward converter is a buck derived topology. Therefore, we expect the input output characteristic to be very similar to that of the buck. That's exactly what we see here. V over V in uh, depends on the D. And uh, um, the only difference in a forward converter is we have this additional um, uh, conversion ratio. That is the turns ratio of the transformer N. Turns ratio of the actual physical transformer. Okay. And we can use this to provide um, significant voltage matching and we can do the fine control as the input changes or the output load changes by changing this duty ratio D to regulate the output voltage. And finally as we do with uh, all other converters we can use power balance to get the average input current input uh, directly from the uh, input uh, DC source. Okay. So we have um, VO times IO equals VN times uh, IN prime and um, so I n prime is V O I O over V n, but V O over V n itself is n times d. Therefore, I n average is n d times the output load current I O. Next, we will look at uh, the different currents. Uh, the first one, obviously, is the inductor current I L, defined this way. And uh, since we have already drawn the waveform for V L, uh, as shown by this um, um, uh, this plot here. Uh, we can uh, use that to draw the waveform of the inductor current, again very similar to the buck. So the uh, inductor current would be this uh, piecewise linear waveform shown here. And uh, the slope during the on interval M1 would be this uh, NVN minus VO over L. Okay. Uh, a constant slope 
and uh, the, the slope during the off interval is negative and that would be minus v over ordeal identical to what we saw in a buck converter and the average of uh, il um, again uh, looking at the kcl at this node in an average sense uh, ic average is being zero gives us il equals exactly the load current io okay, so the average of il um, in this waveform is exactly equal to the load current io okay. um, the next waveform will be the i secondary which is uh, defined as the current leaving the secondary winding i secondary so clearly i secondary is same as the inductor current il during the on interval so the i secondary is exactly same as this uh, il and during the off interval there is uh, um, the d1 here is off therefore there is no i secondary in both of these two off intervals so i secondary is exactly equal to zero in the uh, in the complete off interval the average value of i secondary um, again um, this is similar to the input current in a in a buck converter so if you just take the average of this waveform it will be um, i secondary average is uh, simply um, d times i'll use the steady state d times the io this will also have uh, an influence on the uh, the primary current and that's what we're going to see next okay so we know that the uh, primary current consists of two components one is the im the magnetizing current component and the other is the reflected load current component which we denote as i secondary prime so this is the component of primary current that goes to cancel the flex produced by i secondary therefore it is given as uh, simply i secondary prime equals n times i secondary that is by the transformer action and also need to be careful about the dot polarities so i secondary should be leaving the dot and i primary or the component of i primary i secondary prime that should be entering the dot to cancel the corresponding flexes and uh, uh, so in the plot so this uh, uh, thinner green line is the i secondary prime the reflected load current component and this is the same wave shape as i secondary during that on interval uh, but scaled by n okay. Okay, then the uh, the magnetizing current and uh, the magnetizing current is simply the uh, current uh, through the through this magnetizing inductance so that's the im and uh, what we apply here is the uh, uh, v primary okay. so this is obviously given as uh, l primary the magnetizing inductance referred to the primary side times dim over dt is the applied voltage v primary which uh, during the on interval is uh, simply v in only during the on interval therefore the uh, um, with the constant voltage applied the magnetizing current during the this uh, uh, on interval is given as uh, since v primary is v in it's v in over l primary times the time t okay, that is uh, this expression um, so when you substitute t equals dts we get the peak value of the magnetizing current and that current is drawn here this red line and uh, its peak value is what i just mentioned okay so the sum of this im or the instantaneous addition of im the red line and the i secondary prime reflected load current component is the total i primary that enters in the into the primary winding okay the next waveform we will see is the uh, the current through this reset winding or the reset uh, diode i reset that is defined as shown here entering the dotted end of the reset winding during the on interval uh, we saw that the this diode here here this diode is reverse bias uh, there is no current in the reset winding so the current uh, um, during the on interval here it is uh, exactly zero and right at the instant when the switch is turned off to enter the off interval uh, that is when to maintain the flex continuity there is current in the reset diode and uh, that current uh, its magnitude is uh, for this uh, condition of n primary to n reset equal to 1 is to 1 the magnitude to which the i reset uh, jumps instantaneously is exactly equal to this um, peak of the magnetizing current if you call this as uh, i m peak the value of magnetizing current at the at dts interval um, um, is uh, exactly the same as the magnitude of the reset current at the same instant so this value is also im peak 
Uh, now this is only for this one is to one turns ratio. Uh, if they are different, then the actual expression is uh, n primary times uh, i m peak is equal to n reset times the i reset peak. Okay, so this value is uh, in general this is i reset peak and uh, that is given by this expression. But obviously if n primary and n reset are equal, then this is also equal to the peak value of the magnetic current at the instant when the switch is being turned off. Okay. And after that, once again, this is uh, an inductor with a constant voltage applied. I call this as uh, say L reset. Okay. Um, so if again, if it is um, n primary to n reset is one is to one, L reset will also be equal to L primary. Uh, if the turns ratio is different, then they are scaled by the square of the turns. Okay. And uh, the voltage that is applied here is uh, V reset, and uh, which is uh, during the off interval is minus V in. So therefore, this comes down at a slope M equals uh, minus V in over L reset. The inductance refer to the reset winding. Um, that's That's a slope. And eventually it will reach zero. And uh, as I mentioned, we have to ensure that it reaches zero before the beginning of the next cycle. And uh, once it reaches zero, uh, because of the diode um, D reset, um, it cannot conduct negative current. So the diode turns off and we have zero current during in the reset winding for the rest of the off interval. All right, the final waveform that we are going to look at is the waveform of the flex in the core. Um, the phi C for flex in core and that can be obtained so this is phi C by basically the Faraday's law applied to the transformer primary so um, n d phi over dt is the voltage so n primary d phi over dt which is the flex in the core is the applied primary voltage so we have the primary voltage um, waveform drawn in this uh, in this figure um, okay. so from that we can get the expression for the phi to be um, uh, 1 over n primary times the integral of the uh, uh, of the primary voltage. Okay. So that is this waveform it rises uh, linearly at a slope um, of um, v primary over n primary and uh, exactly at um, um, time t equals d times ts um, that, that is when the phi c has its peak value given by this expression which comes from Faraday's law again. Okay. Now if you look at the uh, flex waveform during the on interval, this flex was due to the IM component of the primary current. There is no um, reset current and whatever secondary current was there, its flex was cancelled by I secondary prime on the primary side. So the only flex producing current is IM and uh, this corresponds to the IM. During the off interval, there is only current in the reset winding and that produces a flex. So this follows the wave shape of I reset during the off interval. Uh, and in fact, we can uh, use the expression that uh, Li equals N phi and in this case L um, I mag uh, during the on interval Lim uh, equals N phi C from which we can also get the expression for the phi hat and uh, that would be L primary um, I mag peak uh, divided by N primary and uh, these two values should be exactly the same. And uh, finally, all of this analysis have been for the case of uh, 1 is to 1 uh, n primary to n reset turns ratio. Now with this uh, we saw that d equals 0.5 is the maximum value of duty ratio and uh, that is because uh, if you let d to be more than uh, 0.5 then you are applying Vn for more than half the period and then uh, uh, we need so there's no way that we can uh, make V primary average to be zero or uh, there's no way that uh, this phi c can come from the new phi c peak value to zero before the beginning of the next interval. Um, so in the next uh, part of this analysis video, we will consider the case of arbitrary turns ratio between uh, n primary and n reset and then derive an expression for d max under that arbitrary condition.